Hey, how's it going? My name is Dustin Hudson. Today we're going to be taking a look at this exploding screen animation. And if we take a look, we can see that we have a bunch of pieces. They're spread out. They come together. There's a video playing. They explode. They come back together. And now there's a different video playing. Now we're going to be using After Effects and Element 3D. And then we're actually going to be using Illustrator to cut our mask up into a bunch of little pieces. And the reason we're using Illustrator is just because it gives you a lot of control over the mask, the paths, how much space you want in between the pieces. And then you can just paste those straight into After Effects. And actually in my original example, I actually just hand placed all the pieces. And so if you don't have Illustrator, you can just do it manually, but it'll just take a little bit longer. All right, so here's our project that we'll end up making. You can see we have our element layer. We have our source video layers, this one. And this one actually is a pre-comp. And we're going to be using that to map onto this geometry. So let's go ahead and make a new project. File, new project. And I'm just going to create a new composition. And you can actually do that by doing Control N. And I'm going to make my comp 1080p, so that's fine. Hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, and the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Y. And I'm just going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go to Effect, Video Copilot, Element. And I'm not going to do anything with that right now. And I'm just going to go to Layer, New, Solid, hit OK. And I'm just going to call this one Mask. And just for the sake of organization, I'll call this one Element. And we're actually going to head over into Illustrator right now. So here's Illustrator. I'm going to go to File, New. And I want my comp to be 1920 by 1080. And just because that's what our video size, if your video was 720, you can make it 720. It doesn't really matter. So 1920, 1080, and hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rectangle tool, and I'm just going to drag it out and it should sort of snap to the sides and I'm just gonna let go so I'm just gonna open up our layer panel here and just make sure that our rectangle is selected and I'm gonna go to the top up here and go to object path split into grid so what this is gonna do is it's gonna split our mask into a grid and in my example I had it 4 by 4 you could do higher or lower whatever looks good to you so I'm just gonna change this number to 4 and this one to 4 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this gutter value to 2 and this one to 2. So that will give it space between the boxes. Now you could give it more or less space between the pieces depending on if you want to increase your bevel size and element. But this is a good size for now. So we'll hit OK. And now you can see that it's split up into a bunch of different pieces. Now we can take these pieces and just select them and copy and paste them into After Effects right now if you just wanted the straight edge. But if you look at the example, I had this sort of rounded edge on some of the boxes. And I actually did that a different way in the example. I actually just, like I said earlier, I did that sort of manually and not, not really a good way. So I'll just show you real quick if you wanted to add that rounded edge to these boxes. And they're all selected, so I'm just going to go to Effect here at the top. Go to Stylize, Round Corners. So you could go ahead and change this value to whatever you want. A higher value will be more rounded edge. Lower will be more close to being straight. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it to 10. And if we zoom in, it hasn't really changed the masks. It just added sort of an effect and generates this stroke. So what we can do is go up to Object, click on Expand Appearance, and that will convert them all to paths. Now it does do one interesting thing is it creates two paths. So if we take a look here, if we select this one and go over here, we can see that there's two versions. I'm not exactly sure why it does that, but what we can do is just go through them manually and delete them. So we'll just delete the bottom one. So just unfolding all these real quick. It's kind of a pain, but it's got to be done. And then I'm at the bottom here, and what we can do is just select this, hold control, select that one, select that one and just sort of go through these and delete the ones we don't want. And then go ahead and just hit delete. All right, so now we can go ahead and just select them all again. If we just select this tool, drag it out, select them all, go to edit, copy, and then let's go to After Effects and let's select our mask layer and you can go to edit paste and that'll paste all the paths into after effects now what we can do is we can go to our element layer we can go to custom layers custom text and masks 
And if we go to this path layer one, where it says none, we can set that to mask. So let's go into our element scene setup. And if we hit extrude, it should automatically extrude that one. Now here's where you can see if you wanted to fine tune the spacing between them. If you wanted them to be a little bit closer or farther away, or you're not really digging the rounded edges, you could go back to Illustrator and just adjust that. So for now, let's go ahead and just hit OK. And we can turn off this mask layer. And we can just turn that off. Let's make a camera. Let's go to Layer, New, Camera. And these settings are OK. Let's hit OK. And what we can do is hit C, and you can cycle through the camera options. And this one is the Z axis, so you can just use it to pull backwards. And there you see our screen is extruded. We can use the camera to rotate around it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and import our footage. I'm going to go to our folder, and I have this diamond one and this light streak one. I'll show you what those are. If we take a look at this one, this is that abstract thing from the example, and it just sort of animates around. And then I actually, for the example, I used the diamond one, just two different versions of it. One was colored this way, and the other one was colored slightly different. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'll just show it going through two different ones. And these are both sort of abstract looking ones. You could use real footage if you want. This one is like these streaks going by. It's actually some streaks projected onto some geometry. So I'll go ahead and bring those out into our project. And they're just below our other layers right now. So I'll go to Element, Custom Layers, Custom Texture Maps. And then under the Layer 1 dropdown, I'll select the Diamond. And under Layer 2, I'll select Light Streaks. And we'll go into the Scene Setup and click on the bevel one material. And if we go down to diffuse, you can switch this to custom layer one. That's our diamond layer. And there's nothing right now, but if we hit okay, and we move forward a little bit, and we'll turn these off, we can see that our texture is mapped to our geometry. If we move around the camera, we can see it being projected on the geometry, but let's go back to our scene setup and let's go down in the material settings. And we'll go ahead and check this Use Layer as UV. And we'll go ahead and turn up some of the spec just so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So that Use Layer as UV option uses the position of the masks and the position of the video to tell how to map onto the geometry. So if I was to turn off the element layer and turn on the diamond and just select that mask layer, we can see that the masks are overlaid on the video in this position. And if we turn on the element layer, turn off that, you can see that it's mapped the exact same way. And now what you can do is you can use the multi-object options to animate the pieces exploding. So if I go to group one, and I go to particle look, and I go to multi-object, and I hit enable multi-object, you can use the displace option to sort of spread them out, and use the displace random to sort of spread them out randomly. And there's other options here for scaling, and scaling randomly, and random rotation, and you can keyframe all that stuff back into place. And if we just hit stopwatch on displace, go back a few frames, pump that up, and then hit the stopwatch on random rotation, we could turn that value up, and then go back to our other stopwatch here. Let's select our element layer and hit U. So just click on it, hit U, that'll show our keyframes, and we can just go to that new keyframe, and put this back to zero. And what you can do is you can animate the pieces going from a scattered position to one solid piece. So that's pretty much main idea. I'll show you how I animate it into the second screen. And I just go to the scene setup. So what we can do is right click on this model and go to duplicate all. That'll duplicate the model and the material. So if we go down to this new material and go down to custom layer one, we can change this to custom layer two, the light streak footage. So bring this up, just hit okay. And let's change this from group 1 to 2. So we'll deselect 1, hit 2. And right now they're occupying the same position, so I'm actually going to move group 1 backwards. So I'm just going to take this Z value and push it backwards. And you can see this one plays now. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Animation Engine. And I'm going to hit Enable. And group 2 is going to disappear momentarily, and I'm going to hit Stopwatch on the animation, go ahead a few frames, and then maybe hit U on the element layer again just so you can see your keyframes. Let's move that one back, go back a little bit, 
And let's turn this to 100. And you'll see it animating forward. And if you just go through it, you can see how the video overlays itself as it's changing materials. And the animation engine is the fun part because you get to mess around with how it's going forward. So what I did is I changed this to radial. And you can mess with the smoothness and just sort of mess with these values until you get something you like. And some other options to play with are these time delay options. And those can change how the model animates forward. So you can change those a little bit and it'll animate a little bit later. And then we can move our camera to just see our animation a little bit better. And another thing we can do is we can change our extrusion options. So if we go back to the scene setup and we click on our extrusion model and go to the material, we can make it just look a little bit thicker. So since we changed it on this material, we want to change it on group two as well. So if we go to right where it says bevel on this heading, you can right click, hit copy, go to the other material and just hit paste at the same spot. And now both will be extruded and just hit okay. And that'll just give some more weight to the extrusion. And then once it's on that one for a while, you go down to Group 2's multi-object settings, go to particle look, multi-object enable. And what I had to do is animate into a little bit more dispersed looking grid. And we can move the lights around a little bit just to see it better if we go to render settings. Lighting, there's already one default light on and that's actually what I just used for the example, but you could create custom lighting. And what you could do is go to rotation and just sort of move it into place just to see it. And then we're going to go back to the multi-object settings. And in the example, what I did was animate this size from one to zero. And then the animation ends there. And then we could hit U again to sort of fine tune those. And then you could just animate your camera however you want. You might move it into place a little bit more forward, animate some of these, maybe pull it out or pull it in. Maybe just give a slight rotation. And that's pretty much it. You can take that idea and do different grid types and even different shapes and put your video on the different shapes and have it animate together. And if we take a look at the original example, we can see that there's a little bit of variation in the specular. I'll show you how to set that up really quick. If we go to the scene setup, and let's just select this one. And if we go to, if you don't have it, you can use whatever texture, just a black and white texture, but uh, Pro Shaders is a good pack of different textures from Video Copilot. So the one I used was from the metal section. And I believe I used this metal grunge one. If we right click, add to scene, and we just click on the material and go to specular, we can see that we have this nice black and white map. And if we just hit okay, if we hit copy, you can go to this texture and just go down to the specular and just hit paste. And you can see it doesn't look great right now, but if we just sort of adjust some of these settings and actually what I did was just turn down the actual specular map a little bit. If we just turn this down to like 20 or so, it's a lot more subtle. And just sort of adjust this how you want. And then we can hit okay. You can see that there's that variation. And I'm actually gonna get rid of this camera animation. And then if we wanted it on our second one, we can just go to scene setup. We can go to our model, go to the material, go to specular, hit copy, go back to this one, hit paste. And then if we wanted the exact settings for the specular, we could just go down to basic settings, copy, paste. And that way they're exactly the same. And that way there's just a little bit of variation. It makes it look a little bit more real. And one of the other things I was doing really quick was adding the video into the illumination channel as well, and it makes it look a little bit more bright. So if we just go to this illumination, 
and load our footage. We can go down to the options down at the bottom and just turn it up. And you can see that it brightens it a little bit. And we can do the same for this one. Copy, paste, turn it up a little bit here at the bottom. Hit OK. You can see that brighten things up a little bit. And if you wanted to, you could go down to Glow. So go to Render Settings. And just go to Glow and hit Enable. And it's going to glow from the illumination channel. So if we just turn that up a little bit, we can see that it's just going to glow the bright parts of the video. And one other thing that's cool is I've been using these sort of abstract looking things, but you can use real footage as well. So I've got this piece of footage. I'll bring it in. I'll just bring it out. And it's just this time lapse footage that me and a buddy did for a local band's music video. I'll go ahead and bring this up, go to element. And actually I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call just this one one, this one two, just to keep them organized. I'm going to move this one till there, till this clip is ended. And then I'm going to bring this footage out till the next clip I want to use. So maybe that one. And I'm going to go to element and go to the custom layer slots, custom layers, custom texture maps. I'm going to go ahead and pick one and two. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off our footage layers so we just have our element. And I'm going to go to scene setup. And I'm going to go to our group one model and click on the material and go down. And under diffuse, I'm going to change this to custom layer three and hit OK. And for our group two model, I'm going to click on the material, go to diffuse, change this to custom layer four. Now I could clear out or turn off the illumination channel entirely just so that we get rid of those abstract looking lines, but they kind of look cool and sort of weird abstract. Maybe if these bars weren't here, they'd look a little bit better, but I don't know. I'm just going to keep them. So I'm going to hit okay. So real quick, let's scrub through our animation. If we go to right about here, we can offset our second piece of footage and that way it'll just change on the correct part of the video. And I'm going to go ahead and go down to the render settings and turn off this glow and I'm going to go ahead and RAM preview. So as you can see, it's blending into two pieces of real footage and it looks pretty cool. And also in the illumination channel, I have the other abstract pieces of footage overlaying on top of the other footage. Now in the original example, it was at a slightly different angle and you could tell a little bit better, but if you wanted some shading between the pieces, you could enable ambient occlusion and sort of pump up this value and you'll get to see some shading between the pieces. It'll be darker when two pieces are close together and it sort of lightens up when they're farther apart. And one of the other very last things that I did in the other example was just create a new solid. So layer, new solid. And I sort of just created this grayish blue looking solid and I hit OK, hit OK. And if you take this ellipse tool and just double click, it'll create a mask. And what you can do is put that under the element layer and hit MM, just hit M twice on the layer and bring up the feathering options and just sort of feather that. And then what I did was, there's an airplane going by. And what you can do is just select the mask by double clicking it. And I just moved it down to the bottom. And then I just duplicated the layer, hit MM again, select the mask, double click, move it up. And just because of the nature of this footage, it happens to have a lot of black in it. So it just gives it a little bit more depth. And then in my example, I just had a little bit of color correction with some curves, tint, and use the noise effect. And then maybe these things you want to be a little bit more blue. So you can go to solid settings. And then what you can do is just copy this. Go to this layer, solid settings. Select the color. Hit paste. Hit OK. Hit OK. And then you can mess around with color correction or add some lens flares and things like that. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments, or any issues come up, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or you can contact me at Twitter at Dustin Hud, and I typically am pretty good about answering questions there too. So thanks for watching, and what's like a good outro thing to say? Good night. Oh, I know. I'll see you next time. All right, so that's pretty much it. You can use this... My dog is barking.